Back paint milk slam. All right, put that little brush away. Next thing we're going to do is the white. No, you know what? I'm going to do that gray real quick. So I got a little gray out, neutral gray. Again, a Americana Deco Art paint. A little bit of neutral gray in there. Don't have a lot of water in there. I want it to be fairly solid. I'm going to paint his sideburns. And I'm going to paint his eyebrows. And I'm going to paint his goatee. But we'll also add a detail on the end of that too so that we'll it'll look pretty good when we're done. All right, got some white. We'll get that white mixed up here. White is one of those things you wanna use either full strength or, or just slightly below. Because white is so transparent, the thinner you make it, the more transparent it is. And the last thing you want is for it to see, you just not be able to see the white on there because it's so transparent. Anyway, we're gonna start at the top of the head, get that hat done. I didn't mix a whole lot of water in this white because I don't need a lot of water and I don't want it to run so it's so thin. And so we'll just I took a class from a guy named Chris Hammock some years ago and Chris is a great caricature carver out of Mexico. I mean, used to live in Texas. He moved to Mexico to live down there in the sunshine. And I'll tell you, I envy him sometimes. Anyway, he would say, well, my painting is fairly easy. You put white where white belongs. You put black where black belongs. And as long as you follow that rule, you're okay. <laughs> I go, well, I think it's a little more complicated than that, but really it isn't. I want to put white where it belongs, not get it where it don't and make sure the colors don't run too much. So you can really, like I said, screw up a carving by having the wrong, a bad painting on there. But I've rescued a few carvers, carvings by having a good paint job on one. So anyway, I try not to leave it to chance and do it myself the right way. Okay. We'll go down here and paint the top of the hat. And depending on whether the paint is run or not, we may have to paint it a little thicker. I got a little bit of blue right there where it ran. And it's all right. We'll use it and we'll cover it up. If you don't watch this video, you'll never know the difference.
Then again, the other part of why that you got to remember is why it's easy to overlook where you've missed a spot because it blends in with the wood, so it's easy to overlook that. So I'm going to turn on the, the hair dryer for just a minute, so watch your sound. I think he's looking pretty good. What I'm going to do now, knock over all the paint first. What I'm going to do now is draw a few little stars. I don't need many, but I'm going to draw a few little stars on the blue part. And I'm going to do that with just a little bit of white already mixed and a little bit of the paint white right out of the top of the lid. And it's going to be, you're going to have to be careful on this because it's easy to mess up, especially depending on what size of, of the brush you have. See how small those are? It can be easy to get them wrong. I do them upside down, that's the way it's easier to see. For me, at least. And I don't have to do a whole lot of them, but I gotta do enough of them. They don't have to be perfect, they just have to give the impression that they're stars on there. There we go. Okay. I'll go around and do a couple of touch-up areas because I see I've made some mistakes in, in a few places and I just want to fix that area. Don't need much. But I got a little too much white down there, so I'm gonna go back over that with gray. So I'm gonna move it ran down there before I could get to the get to the hair dryer. I've got a little bit of blue right there. I just want to touch that up right there with the white. And touch it up with the red because it ran a little bit in the red too. So just watch those little mistakes you make. Make sure you're fixing them. So otherwise somebody's going to point them out to you. And it's one thing if it's your spouse or significant other on the The house where you leave for a show or something and it's another when someone says I don't want to buy that because or I don't want that because paint ran a little bit okay two things we're gonna do last we're gonna do the eyes and then we're gonna do the highlight now normally I do eyes where I put down a layer of black and then the iris color all the way out to the edge of the black where it's just a thin layer and then a little black dot in the middle of that iris color and then one little white dot. On ones this small, I'm not going to worry about them that much. I'm going to go directly to the gray. And he's a steely-eyed... He's a steely-eyed monster. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to have him look over to the side. So I'm going to put a dot there and a dot there because he's kind of looking to the side. And then I'm going to go back and make those dots bigger. They make styluses for this. If you don't really want to do it with a free hand with a brush, because it can be hard, but they make styluses for this. I find the styluses to be kind of in the way because they make a round dot and sometimes the surface isn't flat enough for you to do a round dot on. So I find the paintbrush to be better, but I know there's coming a day in the future when I'm not going to be able to do that because my eyesight's going to give up. And that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Anyway, we got him kind of looking to the right. And that's okay. And hit the dryer a little bit, a little bit for a second.
we'll give the highlight of his eye with just a little dot of white right out of the top, just the full strength. We'll take his eye, put one little dot right there in the upper right, and another one on that other side in the upper right. And you see that? And the last thing we're going to do is, is a, a highlight technique. It doesn't need much because there's not many areas that need to be highlighted, but we need to highlight his hair. So I'm going to take the buttermilk and watch what happens to the hair when I just drag it across it. See those highlights? It works on his goatee, sideburns, and it don't take much, but it takes enough to highlight that. You can do this depending on the underlying paint. You can do this with desert tan or mink tan. You can do it with pure white. You can do it with buttermilk. I like the buttermilk because it hides everything. And gives the impression that he's, that he's antique. All right, the last thing I do when I paint them is spray them with a, a couple coats of clear satin. Clear satin polyurethane, it doesn't gloss. It shines up really well in, in terms of bringing out the color and it protects it. So some of these Boy Scout leaders who are gonna wear them for quite a while or wear them out on camp outs, you need some kind of protection. So you do that and you're done. Don't forget to sign it on the back, especially if you're interested in, in creating a lot of them. People get interested in looking at how what number they have and they want a higher number or whatever. Don't matter to me, but I like signing them so that people know what they're getting and who they're getting. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little carving session that we've had about carving the Boy Scout bolo tie. You can certainly expand this to be uh, carving just about anything you want. I've seen, I've done them for cowboys where they had them uh, in profile or they had them face on. I've done animals and I've done a lot of these things and people enjoy wearing them. So get you some bolo tips to go on there, whatever style you want. Get you a bolo uh a bolo cord and run it through there and uh, you'll be looking sharp so, thanks for coming along on this ride i hope you enjoyed it and um, stay tuned we might be doing another one soon see you later